This is Red Hawk Football on Frontier Community Access Television. High School Football on Bear Country 95.3. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Veterans Memorial Field, Greenfield High School. Tonight, a key Intercounty League North matchup. It's the Greenfield Green Wave and the Frontier Red Hawks. I'm Jeff Terrell, along with Sean Hubert. Studio producer, as always, is Dave Reno. Great to have you with us tonight. The 3-1 Frontier Red Hawks, they have established themselves as the team to beat in the Intercounty League North. A win tonight over Greenfield will further cement that a Greenfield victory, though, Sean, could make things very interesting as we come down the stretch here in October. Yeah, and again, this is a Greenfield team that has given Frontier a hard time here in the last couple of years, and this is really a must-win situation for the Green Wave tonight here as well. We were looking at the league and how that's all shaken out right now. Frontier in pretty good shape where they are. Obviously, a, a loss would not hurt them badly. Greenfield, it looks as though this could be the end of the season as far as playoff uh, contention. And they've got some moving pieces, we understand, tonight, too. Some injuries from last week. Uh, so we'll have to see what kind of Greenfield team comes out on offense here tonight. We'll talk first about the visitors uh, from South Deerfield, the Frontier Red Hawks. Uh, they're headed up, of course, by Garrett DeForest. They use him as a quarterback. They also uh, have him as a running back at times. He's uh, really strong, fast, uh, very strong. Very uh, athletic and very intelligent football player, one of the top players in the Erie County League. But uh, there's more where he came from, and the Red Hawks have been bolstered for the first time this year, and we're very happy about this. It finally did work out with Jake Dodge, formerly uh, of the Turner's Falls football team. He is now a full-fledged member of the Frontier Red Hawks. It took some doing, Sean. It looked for a while like it might not happen, which would have been really unfortunate. But now Coach Don Gordon has another uh, player, another skilled and athletic player to utilize down the stretch here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, somehow, so uh, when Jakey had uh, exchanged schools through down a frontier, uh, there was the waiver got gummed up there somehow. So uh, it looked as though he wasn't going to be able to play at least uh, football season, if not even through uh, baseball and basketball through the year. But uh, able to get that cleared up, and uh, yep, Jakey Charles be on the field tonight. I'll tell you, just one of the one of the nicest kids, hardest working kids, coaches dream that guy. Uh, I'm interested to see how they work him in, and this will be his first game uh, of the season. And of course, uh, on the other side, you get Jake Sack. Both those young men from Turner's Falls played some right, ball over yeah. there together, and now uh, going to be on the other side from each other. And you talk about these uh, Red Hawks, though. Adding Dodge to the mix, I mean that that is really going to uh, help them because you know, a lot of times defenses uh, try to key on Garrett DeForest, but between McMillan, DeForest. Forrest, Samaski, Kirkendall, Donovan Hoffman, who's one of the receivers. Uh, Jack Vassello has uh, made his contributions this year as well. I mean, it, you know, DeForest gets a lot of attention, but uh, there's a lot of weaponry at that, uh, on that Red Hawk team. And again, just uh, going back to Jakey Dodge, I mean, that kid's got that quick factor. You know, that kid's got that, that extra gear, and he can get going quick. So, uh, yeah, you add them into that backfield. I'm dying to see how they use that kid tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing him run around out there. Now, for Greenfield, you mentioned uh, they've been dinged by injuries. Virtually all the local teams have been uh, at least dinged, if not hit heavily hard by injuries, but uh, you know, Greenfield potentially moving some people around. We have heard whispers that uh, Jake Sack, who's been quarterback all year, may move to running back. Nick Bresciano had a great career at the middle school level at quarterback. We'll have to see how they utilize this. If uh, I know during the pregame warm-ups, they did have Jake Sack under center taking snaps. Bresciano was warming up as well because he is a, he is a quarterback. We'll see. We're going to get our answer, Sean, in less than 10 minutes here. Well, understanding that the injury they sustained last week and unfortunately Bobby Provost is out for the season uh, he was actually out with a knee got hurt with a knee last week during that game and then uh, realized he had a broken wrist I guess the next day so that's where uh, Bobby Provost is unfortunate fun to watch that kid 
uh, running the ball this season. Just a sophomore, so he'll heal up. We'll see him next year. Yeah, so what else you got? You got Jared Hart. He's kind of the, the, the bigger, more lumbering, get him through the line kind of guy. You, you don't have that flash. Shane Kilgore did have a big week last week out of the backfield against Athol, but again, that's a very depleted Athol football team as well. So it would make sense to get Jake Zach out into the backfield somewhere other than out of the quarterback position. We'll see if they do that with him tonight. All right, both teams have uh, come out onto the field. Uh, but Greenfield, they uh, had an easy time with Athol. Athol really down right now. I mean, that program is hanging on by a thread in terms of numbers. They are winless. Uh, a, a win may be tough to come by against uh, uh, for that Athol team. But Greenfield, really, a lot of guys put up some big numbers in last week's game. Shane Kilgore. And I'll let you know, Sean, he has changed his uniform number from 21 to 22. So he goes up one digit. So Shane is double deuce now, but he had a big effort. Jared Hart had a big effort. Um, you know, they just had a lot of guys that they used. It, the competition, though, tonight, obviously, much, much tougher. Yeah, and again, just we've seen Athol, and unfortunately, as you said, down in numbers, they're injured, and uh, they're really just trying to hang on here. And you know, I hope they can get themselves a W this season at some point. But they've only scored a couple of touchdowns all season long and given up an awful lot of points. So, yeah. Yeah, just not looking good in Athol right now. And Greenfield had the benefit of coming off the bye and getting down there and playing them. So, All right, both teams are on the field. We're going to have the captain's meeting at the center of the field, and we'll take a break here. We'll come back. We are minutes away from the opening kickoff. Big game in the Intercounty League North. Can Greenfield give Frontier a game? Can they upset them like they did two years ago? We're going to find out in just a couple of minutes. High school football, Bear Country 95.3. All right, before we go any further, I want to correct myself. I was talking about a potential change at quarterback here for Greenfield tonight, and I mentioned the name of Nick Bresciano. Meant to say Drew Conan. Both Drew and Nick are the sons of former Greenfield football players and sort of interchangeable in my mind. <laughs> exactly. But it's Drew Conan who uh, wears number 11. He's out there. We'll see when Greenfield comes out. You know, again, both of those guys were taking the snaps during the pregame warm ups. But we will see who actually gets the start. And of course, they can change up during the game, which quite uh, is common where they make a change. During the game, a lot, a lot of teams like to, uh, you know, ha have a player take a direct snap who may not necessarily be a quarterback. So they just had the toss. Greenfield will receive the opening kickoff here at Vetsfield. A couple of the games happening uh, tonight in local high school football. Athol is at Franklin Tech. It's been kind of a long year for Franklin Tech, but a longer year for Athol. Look for the Eagles to pick up the W there, one would think. Mahar, now they had a tough time against Lee. They lose 30-7 to last week, Sean. They get Monument, an improving Monument Mountain team. So we will see what happens tonight uh, over there uh, in Orange. Kind of surprised about that result. Yeah, again, Same, Lee, yeah. Uh, you know, beating Greenfield there and then losing their next three games. I, I wasn't thinking too much. I thought Mahar would have a good, uh, good game with them. But, uh, yeah, they've been up and down this season. Mahar, a good team, and they just lost some bad games. And we will now pause for the... Star Spangled Banner performed by the Greenfield High School Marching Band. The kids are yelling, let's go. The Greenfield players are Tom Brady uh, sneaking it Sounded down like there. him a little bit there. Yeah, they're getting fired up down there. And again, they know how important this game is here tonight. Other local team in action, of course, is Mohawk. 
And they're on the road against Palmer. Mohawk was cruising through the 2019 season until their loss. And they had a tough time against McCantack. Shut out, Sean, by a score of 12 to nothing. So they're gonna look to get going against Palmer. That's a big game for them. They wanna get right back on track. They're on the outside looking in right now in Division Eight. Yeah, they're not in the top four right now with that loss. But yeah, again, it was a great start for them and really a great night over in Turner's Falls last week. The Mohawk, the Mohawk team, uh, playing that home game in front of the uh, Turner's crowd. There's a nice blend of Mohawk Turner's folks and uh, nice environment, place was pretty full. And then, uh, yeah, the kids just a little bit flat there on the game, lost that one 12 nothing. So uh, other than the result though, that was uh, that was a special night in Turner's Falls last week. Garrett DeForest has it teed up on the 40 yard line for the Red Hawks visiting white jerseys with the navy pants and the scarlet in there as well. Greenfield on the home green helmets and jerseys and white pants. 12 minute quarters here in high school football, so 48 minutes at least to settle this one. And here's the opening kickoff. And it's gonna come to the center of the field. Picked up by Hart right up the middle. And got tripped as he came across the 35 yard line up to around the 37 or so. First down and 10 for Greenfield. And let's see Greenfield's offensive set. Jared Hart's done a nice job of turning kicks this lead. season. Sets up Greenfield with pretty good field position here to start this game, 37 yard line. And yeah, I'm seeing, uh, let's see, Jigsack is there and looks like he might be lining up at quarterback and he is. He will line up at quarterback. Hart and Kilgore, the backs in the I formation. Nick Bresciano to the near side left. Carlos Cardinalis up top on the right. First down to 10 Greenfield from their own 37 yard line. And first handoff goes right up the middle to Kilgore, and he takes it across the 40-yard line. Nice Shane run there the by carry. Shane. Brings it to the 43-yard line, second down coming up. Yeah, good start right there for the green wave. Big gain of six, seven yards. We'll call it six yards on second first down there for Shane. For the Xavier Carlo checks in as well for Greenfield. Second down and four just underway here. Nice night here in the Pioneer Valley and we'll get a little nippy before we're done. Double receivers to the far side right. Cardinalis and Bresciano, backs are split. And they run a counter play, oh. it goes to Hart and he got popped immediately, he took the handoff and the next thing he knew he was on his backside. He just ran right into Samaski. 6'3", 342, he's listed in your program in case you missed that one. Now that's the other Samaski, that's not Josh. No, that's his, uh, That's uh, John Samaski. John Samaski. So a loss of two back to the 42. Boy, he just ran right into a brick wall there, didn't he? He sure did. That makes it third down and six. Cardinalis and Bresciano split to the far side right. Carlo, the tight end on the left side, backs from the I formation. Rolling out to the right is Sack. Let's it fly. Here's it out. Cardinalis could not make the connection. He was open down there, Sean, at around the 33. A frontier, it's fourth down. He was open down there, and I think the linebackers respected his arm so much that they had dropped deep enough following those receivers. I think Sack actually could have run for that first down. So a couple of options there. Both might have worked for Greenfield, but Sack throws it up there. Cardinals just couldn't get to it. They're going to bring him a fourth down, and Greenfield most likely should punt this thing away. Yep, More they are in, uh, in punt formation. Hart set to boot it. Ito McMillan will go back to his own 30-yard line. One of the speedier players McMillan, in Franklin Deep County football for sure. And we'll see if Hart kind of boots it away from him. It's on the left hash mark, so there's a lot of room to the right. Snap goes back. Hart pulls it down, boots it away. A high floating kick. McMillan lets it hit at the 27, then it kicks to the side and goes out of bounds right at the 21-yard line. And that is where Frontier will begin their opening drive. So Greenfield goes three now, 10.26 to play here in the opening quarter. And now it's the Frontier Red Hawks, and we will see how they utilize their newest player, Jake Dodge. He wears number 15. He was out there on that punt return. He now has come to the bench, so he's not out there right now, I don't believe. No, he's gonna start the series on the bench. Well, that punt was fantastic. You had Ito waiting back there for it, and that bounced away from him and out of bounds, so good, good job there by Greenfield. And it goes to Garrett DeForest who was lined up in a slot right and he squirts through and he turns the corner, has the first down and he brings yeah, it out across course. the 35 yard yeah. line. He was bottled up, Sean, right at the line of scrimmage yeah, and the next thing you know he's running around the end. There had to be three or four Green Wave defenders that got his hand, their hands on him, slippery to the outside and then that could have been even worse. He, he gained him about 16 yards on that carry but 
Boy, there was a lot of green grass in front of him. So Sam Schreiber was in that quarterback on that first play, and now it's back to DeForest under center. And the handoff goes to McMillan up the middle, a big gainer. He ball popped loose late, but he was clearly down. Sack saved what could have been a touchdown, but two quick plays there, Sean. And now Frontier has it on the Greenfield 49-yard line. Yeah, we were just talking about that Mahar game and 58-13 final there. Edo McMillan had 11 carries for 184 yards in that one. 13 yards on his first carry here. Ball all the way out over into uh, Greenfield territory down to the 49. First down and 10 for the Red Hawks. They go to the fullback, Kirkendall, right up the middle. Not a lot there. Brings it from the 49 down to around the 47. So we'll give Alec about two there, second down and eight. Got to be frustrating as a defense when you know exactly what's going to come at you, and then it does, and then you just can't stop it. Yeah, it's really not anything that fancy. Sometimes they do that double handoff, Sean, which requires the defense to really pay attention to who has the ball. But yeah, no, it's pretty straightforward. Coming in motion, and the pitch to McMillan. Greenfield stretches it out, but Edo turns the corner, lowers the shoulder, McMillan but a carry. nice tackle there. Carlos Cardinales. Carlos Cardinales brings him down for just a short gain. Third down now for the Hawks from the Greenfield 43-yard line. Yeah, let him know about it too a little bit at the end. A little attitude after that tackle. Yeah, he's always <laughs> he's always been that kind of player. Third All down for the Hawks. So big defensive play here for Greenfield early on. Third down and four. Already one first down on this drive. Looking to make it again. Uh, two first downs, rather. And the handoff goes to the left Nowhere. side. But Greenfield oh, able Matthew. to bring him down for a loss. And that was Samaski's first carry. Not only did he not make it back to the line of scrimmage, but a loss back to the 45. It'll be fourth down, fourth and about six or seven here. Yeah, Cameron Lackey wasn't fused, uh, confused there at all. He knew exactly who had the ball, drove him back. Yeah, loss of a couple on the play. So good defense there by Greenfield. And now Frontier from the Greenfield 45. They're gonna line up to punt this ball away. Hart will go back to get the boot. Snap goes back, they are going to kick it. And a spiraling kick over the head of Jared Hart. It's gonna roll down towards the goal line and it goes into the end zone uh, by just uh, a yard. A wow, pass. he nearly was ball able to have that to die 20. right at the one. Good punt. So this that'll bring the ball back out. 8.07 to play here in the opening quarter. Two first downs for Frontier, but their dry fizzles at the Greenfield 40. So the wave now will take over first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. They went three and out on their first drive. Again, two years ago this week, it was Greenfield in overtime here at Vets Field over Frontier. And then last year, Frontier with a three-point victory over Greenfield, 25-22. They led 25-6 in the second half before a furious Greenfield comeback. Almost Fell like short. Too. Yeah, absolutely. I formation, wide outs to either side. And the handoff goes over left tackle. And I believe that was Shane Kilgore it was. And Shane brings it. Uh, across the 25-yard line up to around the 27. Quick gain of seven, second down and three. Yeah, kid running the ball hard right now. Shane Kilgore, Jr., 5'9", about 150 pounds. Seven. Well, seven evidently, if you wear number 22 at Greenfield High School, you're a good running back. Makes you faster, must, <laughs> huh? We all know who wore number 22 most recently. That was R.J. Bird, who yeah. had just an incredible career here at GHS. Yeah, you know, there's just some kids when we look back, just the ones that we go, yeah, you know, just love to watch that kid play anytime we had the chance, and boy, he's certainly one of them. Backs are split behind the quarterback. Jake Sack, second down and three for the way from their own 27-yard line. Sack calls the signals. They give it to Hart. He has the first down. Brings the ball across the, the 30 to around the 32-yard line, so a and fresh set of downs. Player for the Greenway. Yeah, Greenway nothing fancy there. Just hand it off to the big guy. He's six feet, 200, 200 pounds is Jared Hart. Able to take that over the right side. Pretty good lane for him to get through. Gain of about six or seven and a first down for Greenfield. 7-11 to play here. And the clock is out for some reason. Should not be. Yeah, the clock should be going right now. We had a running play and a first down and no well, they, they, they stopped the clock to set the chain but they should have signal to restart the clock okay but anyway around seven minutes to play here in the uh, quarter scoreless they go back to Kilgore right side nothing doing that time he got dropped immediately 
And that's going to go for either no gain, maybe maybe a loss of a yard, second down. Yeah, as good as Garrett DeForest is as a quarterback, he's pretty good as a linebacker, too. And right there, you could just see, just hone right in on Kilgore and able to drop him back. Yeah, going to lose about a half a yard. We'll call it a yard on that. Second down. Nick Bruschiato comes to the near side left. Carlo, the tight end on the right. Carlos Cardinales split wide to the right. Backs are split behind sack. Play action pass. He's going to tuck it under. Sack over the left side. Gets a block from Hart. He's got the first down into frontier territory. Or close, right near the midfield strike. That was a nice block on the edge by Jared Hart. Yeah, great block. And then again, heads up run by Jake Sack. Him about 18 yards on that carry. And again, we talked about the potential to take him out of that quarterback spot, use him in other places out of the backfield. And that's exactly what we're talking about right there is his quickness. Big gainer there. First and 10 for the Wave right at midfield. So they have two first downs now as well. Out of the I formation, they go to Kilgore on the left side, squirts through a hole, and he brings it from the 50 down to the Frontier 45. Second and five coming up. Oh, he took a good shot at the end of that run too. Again, he's not a big kid. Able to bounce off that. Gain of about five yeah, on that carry. So second and five here for Greenfield. Moving the ball pretty good right now, the Green Wave offense. Yeah, I have to say, some of Greenfield's skill position players, they look more like linemen. The quarterback sack is six feet and a solid 200, maybe even a little more than that. Kilgore is pretty solid. Hart is, a is a, just a mound of muscle. Yep. I mean, they look like linemen out there. Yeah, they do. High formation, wide outs to either side. They go to Kilgore over right tackle. He got tripped up there. Donovan Hoffman came up and kind of grabbed his leg and kept it to a gain. Well, they kind of leaned forward for a gain of two. It'll be third down and about three from the 43. Of course, Hart was a lineman right up until last season. That's right. They decided to insert him in the backfield. You can see why. He's Boy, he's got the quickness. And again, he's done a really nice job returning kicks this season, putting his team in good starting field position. From the Frontier 43, third down and three. Wide outs to the other side. Carlo, the tight end on the right. Backs are in the I formation. Sack takes the snap. Gives it to Kilgore. He has the first down. Brings it inside the 40 down to the 35 yard line. That's three first downs on this drive for the wave. They'll move the sticks. And yeah, not big numbers. I mean, Sacks run for 18 yards, Kilgore's run for 19 yards, and Hart for seven, but very efficient drive right now for the green wave, all the way down to the 35 yard line of the Red Hawks. First and 10 for them there. 4.59 to play here in the first quarter. We are scoreless, Greenfield on the move. Double wideouts to the far side right. The backs are split behind the quarterback sack. Jake ducks in under center. They run a counter play. And the give is going to go to Kilgore on the left side. And Shane, and a flag at the very end of the play. The play was well over as Shane brought it inside the 30 to the Frontier 27. We'll see if the play will stick, if they'll add on to that. They're looking at Greenfield right now, actually. Yeah, it looks like a gain of three, and they're... they're Talking to the Red Hawks, so it looks like it might go against the Red Hawks. And now they're pointing out, let's see. All kinds of pointing. And well, there's a couple things going on. They're, yeah. they're not indicating they're going to step this off actually against Greenfield from the end of the play, but they never said what it was. Yeah. The other thing they're not doing, Sean, is when they're placing the ball after first down, they're not signaling to start the clock again. So no. they, it was a hold, and they. Okay, that came in. That, that's a weird call for, for when the flag yeah, was very thrown. very weird. Now they did signal. Maybe the, maybe the guy heard me. Because <laughs> they weren't signaling before. Yeah, tune in to Bear Country 95.3 <laughs> if you want to. Maybe they do. Not maybe the, that clock, maybe yeah. the officials are <laughs> listening. <laughs> Gee, that guy's right again. <laughs> I forgot about the clock. <laughs> well, I got to tell Freddie to start the clock. <laughs> so they step it off back to the 38. It'll be first and 13 from there. I formation, wide outs to either side. And the handoff goes to Kilgore. He'll try the left side. Not a lot there. He got popped in the frontier. Player who Kilgore made the tackle the actually carry. took the worst of it. He is down. He delivered the hit. And now he will get up. That's Donovan Hoffman, actually, the Hoffman linebacker. Hoffman. He's okay. He got up. He'll stay in the game. I was going to actually signal Dave Reno for a for a commercial break, yeah, they but we'll make keep him it come here. Off, I think. Yeah, he's going to come off the field. Yeah, that's a good idea. Just make sure because 
I mean, he went down. He didn't move he's coming for off about a two, three seconds. Yeah. That's a good idea. Just, you know. Yeah, he's coming off a little slow, too. So, yeah. Just check him out. Of course, nowadays, coaches really err on the side of caution when uh, yeah, have to. anyone has any kind of injury. We've seen a lot of injured players here this Sean. We've seen rosters that are lean to begin with really be decimated well, I guess by injuries. I can say one thing. We've been fortunate enough to not have seen an injury that really affected a kid's life for the rest of his life, you know, and mm -hmm. you have your regular football type injuries, but we've been fortunate not to see uh, a kid get really hurt. Second know? and 10 from the 35 yard line, I formation. And they're going to give it on an end around. It's going to go to Cardinalis. Cuts back against the grain. Carlos brings it inside oh, the 30 yard line. A flag. And a flag at the very they end of the play. They ripped his helmet off. Yeah. On the play. They got him on the bottom of the pile and they just Johnson mugged the kid. They already had the him flag. down. He was kind of bent over sideways. And, and then, yeah, there play. were a couple, three. Yeah, they took his helmet right off yeah. his face. You can yeah. see the kid holding his jaw. He, he took a shot to the jaw. Is he okay? He's, he may come off. He's still really? talking, so he seems okay. He uh, doesn't Red seem Hawks. happy. He's going to go right back into this game. Okay, I thought they were going to pull him out, but uh, there he is. I thought for a minute we might see young, uh, the younger Kachewski, Trevor. He's one of the backup players. Well, Cardinalis is going to have a couple yards on that game. And now what are they going to do? And I They're think going to step that off. So is it a, I'm, I'm guessing face mask. Yeah, they, I, are they going to get Trevor into the game? Trevor looks like he wants to run out there. Face mask yeah. against Frontier. So. First penalty of the game against the Red Hawks. First penalty against Greenfield come on the previous play, so. And the Greenfield coaching staff, three, three of the Greenfield coaches are out there telling the officials they're saying look this is where <laughs> they're trying to assist the effect the officials are like okay Car minute, where we run the ball right so now where they have it spotted at the 26 so step it should be stepped off from there from there because it no what are they doing he's gonna move it over there i'm gonna turn around and i'm gonna go about five yards <laughs> um 22 yard line I I'm I don't know I don't know yeah yeah clock back in motion we have 348 to play here in the first There's quarter green Greenfield way. is getting close to and the red zone out. again this has been a really good line. drive for them the one penalty they committed on this drive but that didn't hurt them they've got themselves another first down here so so not Trevor Kaczewski but Trevor Gibb number 82 a sophomore wideout he has replaced Cardinalis in the Greenfield lineup at least for now First and 10 from the 22, Jake Sack takes the snap, gives it to Kilgore. He'll try the left side, slips through inside the 20 yard line, down to the 18, a gain of about four, second down coming up. This has been a pretty impressive drive for Greenfield, Sean. It, it really has. I mean, Frontier had that possession and then Greenfield's possessed this ball as far as time-wise goes for quite a while here in the first quarter. And again, a few, uh, bunch of first downs and some good runs. No big mistakes, just the one penalty. That didn't hurt him. And I will suggest this. Frontier's got those big bad dudes in the line, but Greenfield's one of the few teams that can r really match up. And Greenfield's got some big boys up there, too. And you said fullback's coming out of the backfield as well, so. Second down and six from the 18. They go back to Kilgore. He'll try it over the left side. Squirts through a hole down to the 15 before he got pulled back. So short of the first down, needs to get to the 12. Looks like it'll be third down and about three. Yeah, let's see where they end up marking that. All the way down, yeah. 15 yard line. and three for the wave. I'll give him 32 yards now on 12 carries for Shane Kilgore. Hart's just got one carry for seven yards in this one. Definitely four down territory here. Yep for the wave. Third down and three from the 15. Ball's just inside the 15. We're down to two minutes to play here in the first quarter. We are scoreless, but that could change. Cardinalis now after getting smacked on the jaw in that play where he lost his helmet. The face mask penalty is back out there now. Eye formation behind Sack. Sack will roll to the right. Here comes the heat. Takes off himself. Cuts back against the grain. He's to the five. He's to the end zone. Touchdown. 15-yard touchdown run by Jake Sack. 6 nothing Greenway. Yeah, 32 yards on the ground on that drive for Jake Sack. Some big runs in that drive for Shane Kilgore. 
But no bigger run there than Jake Sack from 15 yards. Started swinging all the way up to the right side. Tucked it under. He ended up scoring more than midway across the goal line on the other side as he came back across the field avoiding tackles and into the end zone. So Greenfield draws first blood here at 6-0. And presuming that Greenfield will go for two here. And, the line up in the and they will. Two point conversion Backs attempt. are split behind Sack. Wide outs to either side. Sack who just scored the touchdown. Fakes the handoff. He'll roll to the right. Running towards the pylon. Dives towards it. Now his knee went down, but the ball was in the end zone. Good. And the two point conversion is good. We'll take a timeout. 140 left to play here in the first quarter. And on the conquest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard, it's Greenfield 8, Greenfield, Frontier eight. nothing on Bear Country 95.3. So Greenfield quarterback Jake Sack, the junior, scores from 15 yards, runs in the conversion on a rollout right. Nice, impressive drive. Really, only, I think, two plays that got kind of blown up other than that. You know, Greenfield, you know, gains a four, gain a seven, gain a five, you know, just methodically down the field and into the end zone. Yeah, I really just want to remember that he uh, ran into Samaski there. Uh, yep. Kilgore did, lost him a couple yards, but other than that, yep, gained positive yards on every play and a couple good runs by the quarterback. Yeah, Mr. Do-It-All, Sack now will kick off and hits it to one of the up men for Frontier. Number 66 brings it to the 43-yard line. So good field position now for the Hawks, trailing by a score of eight Stop to nothing with a minute Powell. 35 left to play here in the first quarter. That ball was kicked directly at Andrew Logan, and you can see at first you really wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do with that thing. <laughs> he said he had a couple <laughs> of guys in front. He's all right. Well, I'll run. I'm gonna see what I can do, and he all got himself a few yards, got himself uh, over the 40-yard line, down about the 43. We'll call it for Frontier here. Yeah, if your jersey says 66, you ordinarily don't get your mitts. Not touching the ball on the football. Ido McMillan squirts through a hole. That's the center of the Greenfield carry. line brings it out across the 45, up to the 47-yard line. That, by that is a gain of Nick about Ryan. four there. Second down Pick and up six. Now we said McMillan had 184 five. yards against Mahar on 11 carries and 12 carries, 132 yards against Monument in that 33 to nothing win. Second down at about five. And they get it to McMillan again. He'll bounce to the outside, has the first down, run out of bounds McMillan into Greenfield out of territory. Out and a fresh set of downs for the Hawks from the Greenfield 43. Well, they're getting right there, the quickness to get to the outside and actually the smartness to get out of bounds there and not take a big hit. He's kind of ducked out, had the first down already down into Greenfield territory at the 43 yard line. Balls at the Williams 43 yard line. A minute one left to play here in the quarter. Greenfield eight, Frontier nothing. The pitch goes to Samaski. It was behind him though, but a nice play though by Josh, but the timing was completely thrown off, but he did make a nice gain inside the Greenfield 40. Second down coming up. Yeah, nice job by Samaski. He had to turn around and catch that thing. He was still running one way, but his entire body was turned back to get the ball. Did kind of blow up the timing a little bit. Second and six. Was able to kind of roll over a defender for an extra yard or two at the end. Give him a gain of four on that carry. 30 seconds left here in the quarter. Second down and six. Ball just inside the 40 yard line. Quick swing pass left side. That is caught. First down. The ball is pass complete. And let's see what that was on the far side. Is that Hoffman 85? Yep. Donovan Hoffman. He went out earlier after uh, take, well, actually, I was going to say taking a shot. He yeah, delivered yeah. a strong yeah. tackle, but he got the worst of it. But makes the reception. 29-yard line of Greenfield, first down and 10, and that probably was the last play of the quarter. Looks yep. like it will be. And it was. End of one here at Vets Field in Greenfield and on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard, the Greenfield Green Wave 8, the Frontier Red Hawks nothing. Second quarter action coming up next on Bear Country 5.3. Frontier Red Hawks have a first down and 10 at the Greenfield 29 yard line, trailing by a score of 8 0. Garrett DeForest 
in under center, sends his man in motion. They give us to Edo McMillan on the right side, cuts back against McMillan the grain, brings it down to around the 25 yard line, a gain of four. It'll be second down coming up. 32 yards on five carries here in the early going of the second quarter for Edo McMillan. Four, second and six. For the Red Hawks. scored on a 15 yard touchdown run by Jake Sack and Sacker tacked on the two point conversion run. Eight nothing way, but that could change here. Coming in motion is McMillan to the right. Inside give to Kirkendall and Alex keeping the pile moved forward. He's close to another first down. Needed to get to the 19. He's down to around the 22. Well, you know, when Kirkendall has the football, that pile very rarely is going backwards. You know, that's, uh, he's just a big kid, big strong kid. And He's got that low center of oh. gravity. He's got, look, look at his thigh shot. Yeah, I yeah, mean, just yeah. Big, powerful legs, and just uh, yeah, he can take a pile of kids with him for a couple yards. Donovan Hoffman to split far to the right, double wing formation, under center. Calling the signals. And off goes to McMillan on the right side, but Greenfield pushes him back and rips him down. McMillan Did not McCurry. make the Taken first down. down. It'll be four down. Down. It's four down Number territory 70. anyway. But he needed to get just inside the 20. He did not make it. And with a purpose on that tackle as well, McMillan went flying backwards. That was uh, fourth and three that was Colby the Avery, this 270-pound senior who just ripped him down. Yeah, Edo, not a big kid. So, yeah, he just, uh, as you said, ripped him down. He went flying, and now it's fourth down for Frontier. So down 8 nothing. It's early, but pretty important play right here for this offense. From the 32-yard line. And a give is to McMillan, and he has the first down. He is fast as he has spun down McMillan inside the 20 carry. yard line, down to around the 16. They convert on fourth down. down, and a fresh set of downs for Frontier. It looked like one of those tops, so you take the string and you just pull the string and let that thing fly, and he just zoop, and there he goes. That's exactly what he looked like, right yeah. Right through the line and just through a little hole. And yeah, he has very good lateral movements. Quick. He's not straight up and down. He likes to go side to side, too. Under center, so from the 16 yard line or so, first down, they go to Kirkendall, he ran to the right side of the Greenfield line, wasn't a lot there, then Kirkendall kept it going, carry. brought it inside the 15 to the 14. Short gain, second down, 9.40 to play here in the first half, eight nothing Greenfield. Green. Yeah, he might have run into the backside of one of his own linemen there too, just put his head down and was able to keep his footing second and, and kind of poke his head into a different spot and gain a yard or two there, second and eight. No Jake Dodge yet. Seen him on defense, not on he offense. Did not on offense yet. And the double handoff, it goes to McMillan, bounces to the outside, cuts back against the grain, another first down or close two. McMillan on the he carry. is down around the five yard line and that should another be enough for down. another Red Hawk first down. It's gonna, Red Hawks. Let's see, yeah, it'll be first down and goal. Yeah, really quick again, you just sometimes you can't stop quick. They've been doing a pretty good job so far, this Greenfield defense, but Ito's starting to chew him up a little bit. 46 yards on eight carries now for him. Ball is right around the Greenfield four yard line. First and goal for the Hawks. Looking to tie this game. They go to Simaski up the middle, leaning towards the goal line. Close, did not Looking get in. Middle. Down at around the one. Second. And goal Back from there, the Cameron Lackey line. on the tackle. Third carry for Samaski, just four Cameron yards for him. Kirkendall's got three carries for six yards. So it's been mostly Ito McMillan. Second and goal inside the The one. ball is on the one yard line. DeForest takes the snap, gives it left nope. side, and Greenfield's able to stack it up. Good up in the backfield, didn't make it. That tackle came from the backside. I think it's gonna lose a yard or yeah, so. Yeah, that was Samaski. And now it'll be third down in goal from uh, right around the one and a half yard line, I'll say. Looks like, yeah, you just moved that marker just an inch backwards, so. Yeah, it, wa it was inside the one, now it's right about the one. All right, Frontier now, they've got two cracks at it here. DeForest, he'll take it himself, lurches forward, and delayed There's call, the touchdown. Okay. Greenfield's defensive line, they did stack them up briefly, but then Garrett was able to find a little bit of a gap, leaned into the end zone, it's 8-6. Yeah, good second effort there. Tough to tell if he got in from up here just because of our angle, but just a mass of bodies. Tough to keep a kid out from a yard, especially yes. with those big guys up front blocking for you. So nice job by Greenfield defending right up until that play. 
Frontier does run that one in 8-6 now with the extra points pending. Frontier will line up to go for two. And they will go for the tie. Pitch goes to McMillan on the right side. He's going to turn the corner, dives towards the pylon. Just like Sachs. And... He got there. Okay, again, a very delayed call. Two-point conversion is good, and we are tied at eight. We'll take a timeout. 7.40 to play here in the first half on the Carquest Greenfield. South Deerfield and Shelburne Falls scoreboard. Greenfield 8, Frontier 8 on Bear Country 95.3. Garrett DeForest after his one yard touchdown run kicks it to Hart, picks it up at the 10 across the 20, 25, 30 and then tripped up there Hard on the return. nice special teams tackle down there and he brings the ball to around the 32 yard line and Greenfield now goes back on offense they went three and out on their first drive their second drive was much better very strong running game, went right down the field First and scored on a 15-yard touchdown run by Jake Sack. Yeah, and they possessed the ball for quite a while, so they'd like to do that same thing right here. Seven and a half minutes to play here in the first half. You're tied at eight, and you could hold on to this ball for four or five minutes, end up punching it in. That bode well going in at halftime. I formation behind the quarterback, Jake Sack. That's Hart and Kilgore, wide outs to either side. Tight end Carlo is on the left side. Long snap count. Sack takes the snap, gives to Kilgore, bounces to the outside, across the 35, across the 40. Close to a first down, needed to get to the 43. He's a little bit shy. It'll be second and short. Well, he took on that linebacker at the end of that run and put his head down, spun for an extra yard or two at the end of the run. They're going to give him nine on the carry. Well, this is fun, Sean, because we're seeing a lot of players that are the sons of guys in our age uh -huh, range. Always fun. You know, you got Kilgore. Sack. Dad played at Greenfield. Sack. His Second dad played, of course, at Turner's Falls High. Bresciano. Bresciano. Hart. Yeah, a bunch of them. Second down and only a yard and a timeout called by Greenfield. We'll step aside for the break. 6.46 to play here in the half. We're tied at eight. Back after this on Bear Country 95.3. Second down and less than a yard for Greenfield at their own 43 yard line. I formation behind sack. Jake gives it to Kilgore. The play is whistled oh. dead. That's Flag the false down. Start on Greenfield. Yeah, I think so. So it's going to take it from second and one to second and six. Yeah, just a second penalty against the Green Wave. 15 yards against them. The one penalty against Frontier there in the first quarter, also 15-yarder. We'll have our halftime report coming up. And usually we do a Patriot preview for a Sunday game, but as most of you know, the Patriots actually played last night. So we'll do a Patriot review. Their victory over the Giants. They were having a tough time for a while. As New York played very Nothing well, but for the wave. Pats did go to 6-0. and We'll talk about it. At halftime, Kilgore on the left side broke through one tackle, but not the other one. Kilgore Short of a first carry. down, he brings it to around the 40. He is about three or four yards shy of a first down. We got third down Not coming up DeForest here. Yeah, Logan. again, Kilgore had a nice week last week stepping into that role where Bobby Provost third got hurt. And as we said, we just found out earlier, Bobby will be out for the season yeah. with a broken wrist, which is unfortunate. But Kilgore had 139 yards in that game. Jared Hart had 116 against the Red Raiders last week. Third and about two for Greenfield. They actually spotted it closer to the 41, 42 yard line, so. Third down and short. I formation behind sack, double wide outs to the near side right. They go back to Kilgore, left side and lurches forward Got and it. he has the first down Kilgore at the Greenfield 45. And the drive continues, and this is, I, I believe, Sean, this is Greenfield's path to victory. Con control the clock. They're probably not as dynamic. In fact, I'm sure they're not as explosive offensively as Frontier, but you can still win the game. Well, and absolutely. Again, Jake Sachs only attempted one pass in this game, so we can clearly see what the game plan was coming in. And so far on offense, they've executed that. We don't do time of possession, but they certainly have held this ball much longer than the Red Hawks have. And just grinding down that clock. Ball now at the 45-yard line. They're on 45-yard line. It'll be first and 10. Just over five minutes to go here in the second quarter. Cardinalis and Bresciano to the near side right. Hart 
and Kilgore in the I formation behind Sack. They go to Kilgore, Frontier waiting for him that time though. Forward momentum going back to the line of scrimmage but then driven back from there. It will be second down and long. Yeah, Frontier D has done a pretty good job on some of those plays stopping Kilgore in the backfield or at the line of scrimmage. Kilgore sitting at 46 yards now, but 16 carries for him here in the first half. Yeah, he's getting a lot of work. I remember a uh, lot of uh, stellar running backs. That's what they do, they load them up. Over 20 carries a game, sometimes well over 30 a game. Backs are split this time. Usually they run a counter play out of this formation. No, nope. instead the pitch goes to the left side to Jared Hart, looks to turn the corner, never got there. Okay. Great play by Donovan Hoffman. The linebacker came up, dropped him for a loss. It'll be third down and long. Yeah, we've called his name a bunch of times already tonight, Donovan Hoffman, and nice job there on the tackle of Hart as he tried to get around the left side. And they're going to bring him right back to, the, they're going to mark it right at the line of scrimmage, say no gain on that play, but good tackle there. Third down and 10 for the wave. We are tied at 8, 344 clock in motion here in the first half. Greenfield scored on a 15-yard touchdown run by Jake Sack, Garrett DeForest on a one-yard touchdown run. Both teams were able to run in conversions right at the pylon on the right side of the field. All right, we'll see if they do play action, roll out here. Nope, straight drop back. Sack sets up, throws a deep ball Play middle, and over the head, Sacks, well Sacks beyond the intended receiver, Sacks, Carlos Sacks, Cardinalis, Sacks, who either broke off the route, Sean, or no. got caught up. I think they got tangled up. Yeah, yeah. I actually kind of caught a little bit of that in Cardinalis, and it looked like their, uh, their feet just got tangled. He got tripped up just a touch, and I could see the ball coming by the time he was able to regain his footing. He was not going to be able to get to where the ball was. Incidental contact, so yep. no flag. No, absolutely. In case people are wondering why the laundry didn't come in. So Edo McMillan now is going to go back to around his own 25-yard line to get the punt from Four Hart. Yeah, you've got to away. think that if he hadn't gotten all tangled up there, he might have had a shot at a touchdown because he would have been wide open running right down the middle the of the field. Box. And Greenfield looking to the bench. They're not going to pull something funny here, I wouldn't they? think so here, but you I never know. I wouldn't think so either. Snap goes back to Hart. Jared with a nice high punt. Rather short, though. See what kind of kick it takes. Takes a nice Greenfield oh, roll. Great Greenfield kick. Inside the 20-yard line, McMillan. <laughs> Edo kind of stands there and says, ah. Who was that we were doing recently? <laughs> that was last week. Last that was, week. Uh, uh, was Jayden. Jayden. Red Hawks inside oh, yes. Jayden White. <laughs> every How can I, time. Every time the punt came down, he so wanted to pick it up and run. And he never got it. Did he ever have even one return? I don't think he did. He, he wanted a couple where they rolled around right. Now there's a flag down, but now they're, they're picking that thing up. So that's not going to mean anything to anybody. So. I uh, didn't even have to mention it. But, yeah, I was whiting. Every time he had the defenders down there, the ball be rolling right at him. And every time you can see those fast twitch muscles just wanting to grab that thing. But the common sense kicking in saying, no, nah, this isn't going to work out very well. And, but he was itching to grab one and take it back. Turner's not able to score. Excuse me, Mohawk not able to score last week at Turner's. 3.07 to play here in the first half. We are tied at eight. Frontier now takes over on downs after Greenfield got one first down on that last drive. And the handoff. Not a lot there. The ball popped loose. And I heard, I thought I might have heard a whistle. Cardinalis ran to the end zone for a touchdown, but the officials are going to say the runner was down. I thought I heard a whistle. Okay. The Greenfield coaching staff says we got six. Yeah, well, if there was a if there was a whistle, there's no way they can say touchdown because the players stop at that I point. I swore I heard a whistle. Maybe I didn't. Do you hear a whistle? Yeah, all right. A couple guys up here saying, yeah, they thought they heard one too. I saw the, the I heard, thought I heard the whistle as I saw the ball pop into Cardinalis' hands as he started running towards the end zone. All four officials are conferring right now. Cardinalis is still holding the ball. <laughs> he doesn't want to let that thing go. This is my touchdown. He's still waiting to hear, though. So the lead official well, is going to, be ball back. going to be second down for Frontier. Still says still says first down. They're talking. Well, it had to be a play there, right? They ran the yeah, play. So they ran a play, so it has to be second down. Oh, look at, oh, look at Al Dean. Oh, and, and oh, Al, Al Dean and Mike Kachuski. Al is, Al is, I've never seen Al that Whoa. mad in my life. 
Kachewski, Mike Kachewski he's angry is screaming too. I, at I, the official. I've seen him angry, but uh, not that angry. And, and Al Dean, I've never seen that man lose his composure, well, not I'll, once. I'll tell you what, Sean. Boy, is he that, unhappy. That is very telling. Yeah. We, we, we can't yeah. see what happened. I mean, we you know no. we don't have the same vantage point as when you're watching a game on TV yeah. with multiple cameras. Mike Kachewski is just screaming at the official. And Al Dean looked like he was... Never seen that man that mad. Oh. So they must have seen something, and I. And they're still talking. Oh, they, 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 they've calmed down a little bit. But yeah, there's a, and Mike's following him right out there. He's going to. Kutch is going to get the last word, and he did. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. No flag there. So th sometimes a referee's willing to take it when they know they might have messed up a little bit. And that guy took quite a bit of abuse right there. So I, I don't know what down it is right it's here. It's got to be second down. They ran a play. Right. Now the officials are now talking again. These guys have struggled a little bit tonight, huh? They're they have. Cool. Yeah. Admittedly, they yeah. have. That face mask penalty. They marched off five yards after moving the ball. Well, we are going to have to talk to uh, Mike Kachowski after the game and yeah. say what happened late first quarter on that play when yeah. Cardinal, the ball definitely ended up in Cardinalis' hands. He ran into the end zone. He was sure that he scored. He, he, he was 100% convinced that he got the ball. And not, ended up in the end zone. I'm not sure what the question is now, though. I mean, they ran the play. If they called him down, that's going to be second down. He's about the line of scrimmage, so let's go. Second and ten. They ran the play. Right. Whether it was a fumble or not, it was a play. And it was cut back out to the line of scrimmage, right? He was, he kind of was in the middle. He dove in the middle, and yeah. the, the ball squirted out of there. And, and the official put up. He put up one finger, like first, fir down. first down. Right. I have no, nope. Sean. That makes no sense. Zero. Back to passes to Forrest, rolling to the right, airs it out deep on the right side. It oh. is nearly caught by Donovan Hoffman at midfield. He wants the flag, not going to get well, it. I'll tell you what, Hoffman pushed off a little bit. Honestly, the defender was right there. Hoffman pushed to get a little space. So if he had made that catch, that actually would have been pass interference against him. Although I don't think the referee saw that. So if you come up with that catch, that would have been a big game. But yeah, he did push off the defender a little bit to get that space, and then he was the one looking for the flag. But well, I'll tell you what, John. Uh, you know, we talked about the struggles of the officials here this evening. When I watch professional football, to decide what is defensive pass interference and what isn't, uh, it's really hard oh, sometimes. And they were far away, so yeah. And the handoff goes to McMillan, and Edo has it for a first down up at the 40-yard line. Yeah, Mike Kuczewski is still upset over David what Kylo. transpired. Again, we don't know exactly what yep. happened. I don't know if it was a terribly blown call or not, but I just feel like Al Dean's reaction especially yeah. was very, very telling. Yeah, I mean, again, he, Al. Uh, I mean, e either something was missed or Al Dean deserves Redhawks. an Oscar for, uh, <laughs> for for acting as if something. I don't think I've it. ever seen him barking like that. No, I, I, I never have. No. And he's been doing this a long, long time. Yep. So now what are we doing, refs? We got. Now third down. Wait. Oh, they're going to measure. Okay. Okay, I thought he had the first down easily, but apparently not. They marked I'm him back a little bit. All right. Well, once we get to halftime here, I think uh, everyone needs to kind of cool out a little bit and uh, and have the officials kind of re regain control of this game because it's yeah. been a very good football game, Sean. Yeah, actually, it really has. We had hoped that this would be a good one. And and we thought Frontier right might be a, a little bit of a favorite and maybe a heavy favorite, some thought, line. but Greenfield, nice job on offense tonight, moving the ball. They get the touchdown with the two-point conversion. Frontier hasn't possessed the ball an awful lot on offense today. Let's see, 2-4. 11. 28 yard line in first down and 10. And they give to McMillan again. And he scampers up to the 35 yard line. So a nice first down here for him. Second down, two minutes to play here on the half. Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football halftime report coming up. Yeah, Frontier has run 19 offensive plays. Just for an example, Shane Kilgore has 16 carries for Greenfield. <laughs> All so, by himself. Yeah. yeah. Second down and four. The give to Samaski, breaking tackles, wow. first down and more, looks to turn the corner. Wrapped up by Cardinalis. First down and 10 for the Hawks up at the 48 yard line and with a minute 30 to play. They would love to try to reclaim the lead here. They have not led yet tonight. Best run by Samaski for him tonight. Five carries, 18 yards, broken tackle at the line of scrimmage. 
And then a good run. And now Frontier going to their hurry up. On first down, DeForest. Handoff up the middle to Kirkendall. Takes it into Greenfield Welcome territory the from the, the 48 of Frontier to the 48 of Greenfield. And a timeout call with a minute Back 10 left. That was called by Frontier. We're going to keep it right here, Sean. Yeah. This, uh, the last the few minutes of this first half have been a little, <laughs> a little bit crazy. Al Dean, Greenfield uh, defensive coordinator, going to go out and talk to his kids. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, this Hawks. could be crushing if Frontier were to score before the half. I mean, especially where Greenfield half. had felt they just scooped that ball and ran it into the end zone. They thought they were going to take the lead into halftime, but not to be the case. Frontier still has the ball. They still have plenty of time. Minute 10 seconds. They get plenty of timeouts. Ball right around the 50-yard line. As we said earlier, this is more of a quick strike offense than the Greenfield offense. Edo can run one in from anywhere. The ball is right around the 49-yard line. Oh, see, he, hey, Sean, he was down more like the 48-47. Now right. they put it back at the 49. I'm not sure. Hey, you said from the 48 to the 48 was basically where he got tackled. Yeah. They got it touching the nose. The ball is actually touching the 50. Yeah. So we'll call it the 49. And now the force will go out of the shotgun formation. Takes the snap. He's back to pass. Zips it on the right side. Caught by Hoffman. Inside the Greenfield 40. Ooh, helmet oh, came flying after. Oh, that was Cardinals again. Lost his helmet again. I think he needs to tighten that chin strap oh. evidently. <laughs> but it's another frontier first down. 35 yard line of Greenfield and the Red Hawks now are on the move looking to take the lead. Greenfield's playing with only 10 guys, I think. Back to pass, the flag is down. This could be a free play. DeForest turns oh, the corner. Oh, 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 big block. That was, oh. Oh, we got flags oh, everywhere. Oh, as well. that was a bad block right Kilgore there. That was got, a terrible hit. Kilgore got drilled Kilgore's from behind. Kilgore's going to have to come off the field. He never saw that coming. Yep, one oh, of the frontier men just leveled Shane Kilgore. So he, that flag is definitely against the Red Hawks. But what happened was, is Frontier had gone to their hurry up offense. Cardinalis came off the field. I don't think he got replaced. And uh, I think Greenfield only had to, so Greenfield didn't have too many men on the field. They, I don't think they had enough. And that's not a penalty. Yeah, I mean, if you want to play with only 10 guys, you can only play with 10 guys. But Kilgore was coming back and he never even saw that block, a blind side. And he was in a crumpled heap there for a second. Well, the thing is, Sean, if the official noticed the Greenfield player coming off the field and threw the flag thinking that he was player number 12 coming off and threw a flag thinking Greenfield had too many on the field, they did not. No. They only had 10 because Cardinalis had lost his helmet. He came off the field, was never replaced. But it will get stepped off against the Red Hawks. Well, that's going to be for that, that hit. Yeah. All the way back to the 47-yard line, and now only 43 seconds left here in the half. So that's a big, big break for Greenfield. We'll have to see if Kilgore is going to be. He did walk off the field Boy. under his own power, but he was staggered. He got absolutely yeah. pounded. Yeah. First and 20. Never saw it coming. No. For the Red Hawks. First down Ball's and back at 20. They need to get to the line. 25. It's at the 48. Back to pass. And now taking off is DeForest, squirts through. Bad blocking by Greenfield, but taken down DeForest taken down at around the 43-yard line. 33 seconds left. They're going to call the a quick TL here. We'll take the break. I mean, I'm sorry. We'll keep it right here. Sorry, David. Dave Reno, I'll let you know that we're going to keep it here until halftime because, <laughs> the, Sean, <laughs> these last three, four minutes have been just crazy. Yeah, and, you know, kind of, again, the refereeing a little inconsistent. And look at Al Dean over there still trying to, I mean, those guys are really unhappy with the, couple of things that have happened here on this drive. Again, it was a first down play that was fumbled and then they went right back to first down for Frontier again. Second Never even called it a play. That didn't make any the sense. Red Hawks with 33 seconds remaining in the half. 33.2 seconds to go here in the half. Kilgore's up off the bench. He's drinking some water. He's uh, having conversation. Doesn't look much worse for the wear, but what a big hit he just uh, took. Yeah, he must have been yeah, yeah, he looks okay. He looks fine. Look, he's checking his hair and everything. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> how's, how's my how's my mop? Right, how much back on? And he's going to go out wow. there defensively. That's a big hit. Good for him. 
tough, tough yep. kid. Good for him. We haven't talked about the Pink Sox yet tonight. I'm less, I, I, I don't like them as much uh, with the Mohawk team, with the yellow and the blue. The green, not so bad. It does, yeah. With the pink breast cancer socks. All right, they're going to go shotgun. Garrett DeForest takes the snap. He is back to pass with time. Now flushed out of the pocket. He's going to tuck it under himself to the 40, 35. Run out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Short of the first down, 24.9 seconds left With in the first half. On the 33 yards on four carries for the quarterback, DeForest. Zito McMillan leading the way, 10 carries, 62 yards for the Hawks. But 24.9 seconds remaining here in the first half. They'll have it third down now, just outside the Greenfield 30, about the 32-yard line. Third down and about seven. Again, they go shotgun. The Forest back to pass. Heavy rush, evades the sack for now. Let's it fly on the right side. He's got a man wide open. Hoffman at the 10 yard line. And they're in the red zone inside the 10 with 14 seconds left. Hoffman wide open. Hoffman has had himself a night both offensively and defensively now. A couple catches, big yards, first and goal now. For the Hawks, 14 goal. seconds to play in the half. And, and the ball the right around line. the Greenfield seven yard line. A couple of plays, maybe. Huge, huge turn of events right here. These next plays are gonna be huge. And the handoff up the middle. Samaski, short gain, Frontier calls a quick timeout. He got the ball to near the five yard Samaski line. Up the middle. Seven point seconds left. So 7.7 .7 seconds. So, Sean, if they pass and it's incomplete. It depends how quick that happens. Yeah, so, yeah, Frontier, they want to talk. They're probably going to call two plays here. They're going to call. I, I, if they run yeah, the, if, they run, if they run it and don't get it in, they'll never get, right. they'll never get the second playoff. No, so. you got to have to throw the ball here. But, again, 7.7 .7 is not a lot of time to. It really might. Might be the last play either way. This really might be the last play. Well, this, this would be huge. Half. This would be huge for Greenfield. Again, just a momentum swing going in at halftime. Just a minute ago, they thought they'd scored a touchdown and they were going to take the lead. And now it's uh, one play away from being down. They're going to put 8.2 on okay, the clock. Okay, so they're going to change this to 8.2 seconds. Well, that could make a difference, honestly, if it, between a pass play and a run play. You know, I have to say, I mean, Greenfield and Turner's Falls was the traditional rivalry, and hopefully will once again be, but Frontier had it over Greenfield most seasons ever since Greenfield joined the Inter-County League, but now yeah, this has turned out to be pretty good matchup. great rivalry. These last three games have been great. All right, second down and goal. And this play whistled dead. They actually would a uh, handoff to McMillan who pitched it back to Samaski. Samaski was going to run back this way. And he's got his hat off. Why is this? Yeah, the official, the lead official took his hat off, which usually signals the end of the half. We yeah. know it's not the end of the half. And why is he talking to the bench over there? No flag came in. They whistled that play dead. What? You know, Sean, I... Again, we don't, we're not privy to everything that's happening down there, but. That's 0 .82 seconds, right? Yes. So we have less than a second remaining? Is that what they're telling us? <laughs> 8.2 seconds! Yeah. That's what he's saying. That's 0 .82 seconds. Well, at the very least, they can keep. <laughs> keep it on the field, They can keep, keep yeah, it on the seconds. field, Let's which is what they did. Yeah, these referees are really not having a good night. Very seldom do we say that, Jeff. You know, every, every once in a while you see a play here, a play there. These guys are kind of struggled through this entire game. Frontier has it. Greenfield, seven yard line, we'll call it. Somewhere around eight seconds left in the half. Tied we're at eight. We're tied at eight. Frontier probably with one play. If there's a quick and completed pass. That was going to be a running play, though, that they're going to run here. All right, DeForest is going to roll to the left, looking towards the end zone. Sets up, throws back into the end zone. Tip incomplete. Pass is incomplete. And That's not right. I have no idea how much time is left yet. I have no idea. I think we'll have... Yeah, that did not run down properly from... 
They were saying it was 8.2 seconds. That was probably four or five right there. Well, it had to be. So back to 1.2 seconds. Okay. So this will, barring a... Here's Jakey Dodge. Barring a defensive penalty. Yep, Jake Dodge out there for his first play and offensively. Now, now the flag, flag is down. What are we doing? Delay a game. Delay a game on Frontier. Huh. Sean, halftime can't come. I think we just I think we need to just kind of start all over. I hate to sound like Lou Maloney, but what are we doing here? <laughs> What's going on? So they're gonna bring the ball back outside the 10 to around the 13. Dodge is in. He is well, he's over the left side. Now he's gonna go all the way back to the right. Final play of the half, unless it's a defensive penalty. Back to pass to Forrest, rolling to the right, throws down towards the goal line, and he is in. Did he get in? No. No. He just stepped out. Stepped out just before the goal line. So after all of that, wow. we remain tied, and, and we have come four. to halftime. Eight, eight. One of the more bizarre sequences in all the years that we have done high school football together, you and I, Sean, and we've done it for a long time. Well, let's hope the second half goes a little more smoothly than that, but we've got an 8-8 ball game going in at halftime. We'll take a timeout. Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report is coming up next. This is Bear Country 95.3. This is the Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report. Vets Field, Greenfield High School, Greenfield 8, Frontier 8 at halftime. I'm Jeff Terrell, Sean Hubert alongside, and our studio producer is Dave Reno. Well, that was quite a first half, Sean. Only two touchdowns, but a lot of action and a bizarre sequence in the latter stages of that second quarter. Frontier got right into the red zone, but really so many crazy things happen, and most of them against Greenfield. But the Green Wave able to keep them out of the end zone, and we're right back where we started when we had the opening kickoff. Yeah, and again, we're having ourselves a pretty good football game here tonight. We thought we would have a competitive game. Again, we knew Frontier would be a little bit of a favorite, and some folks thought maybe a heavy favorite in this one. But, yeah, that Greenfield offense, they did a really nice job in the first half, possessing the football, running the football, keeping the chains moving. Shane Kilgore had 16 carries for 46 yards in that first half. Sacker had a couple carries for 32. Of course, he ran in the touchdown as well. But we'll have to check on Shane Kilgore in that second half. He took a shot right there at the end of the first half. Never saw it coming. And, well, he looked no, no worse for the wear. But that shot had to have taken its toll. We'll see uh, how he comes out here in the second half. Yeah, and Greenfield, of course, uh, already uh, decimated by injuries amongst their skill position players. Uh, Bobby Provost, their uh, fine young running back, done for the season after uh, having a pretty pretty good season up till date but now they're going to really rely I, know, I think the guy that they're really going to rely on really for the rest of the year is number 10 and that's that's Jake Sack he had the touchdown the two-point conversion they are going to lean very very heavily on the junior well and again we'd heard uh, just some whispers before the game the potential for the maybe uh, Drew Conant getting the start here tonight allowing them to use Jake Sack out of the backfield in, in different capacities. We haven't seen that yet tonight, but wouldn't be shocked if that's something that we do see in the near future. Again, Jake Sack's a kid. You want to get the ball in his hands anytime you can. He's quick, he's fast, he's smart. And, uh, you know, again, you get, a, you get a kid in uh, Conan, pretty good quarterback growing up. So you can stick that guy in there and uh, use Sack in some different ways. But right now, the offense running very efficiently. Shane Kilgore, again, having a pretty good first half. Jared Hart, just a couple carries, seven yards. So. Really just all Shane Kilgore and uh, Jake Sack coming out of that Greenfield backfield in the first half. Greenfield eight, Frontier eight, that is a score at halftime. We'll take a timeout, we'll come back, we'll get you set for the second half kickoff. Frontier will have the ball to begin the second half. An eight, eight tie. This is Bear Country 95.3. All right, we are getting set now for the second half kickoff. Greenfield will be kicking to begin the second half. We have an eight, eight tie. The two quarterbacks here tonight with touchdown runs. Sack of Greenfield from 15 yards. He tacked on the conversion run. Garrett DeForest from one yard out and Ido McMillan with the conversion. Eight, eight tie. Big game, especially for Greenfield. Some of their bench players are trying to get the crowd fired up here and we have a nice crowd here. Nice crowd, nice night for a football game. Mm -hmm. Temperature's still pretty mild, yep. no precipitation. Feels like football. Yep. 
All right, Greenfield Let's now will be booting it away. Zach has it teed up on the 40-yard line. Edo McMillan stands back at his 20-yard line. And they squib it. And that's a free ball. Jumped on at the 30-yard line by the Frontier ball defender down, down there. So first line. and 10 for the Red Hawks. 30-yard line. Third quarter is underway here. 24 more minutes, maybe more. We're tied now. We've had overtime before, not for a while though. Most heartbreaking overtime for you and I, Sean. No question. Oh, that had to be Pioneer. Pioneer yeah. where? Down at Westfield State. Pioneer had that game. And the pitch goes to Samaski again. It was behind him, but Josh does a good job. Uses a stiff arm, but Matthew ridden out of bounds McCary. on the far side. Nice play there by Carlos Cardinalis. And his helmet did not pop off this time. <laughs> yeah, it's only happened twice. Well, I'll tell you what, every time his helmet comes off, I just hope his head's not in there. Uh, well, both times he's come out smiling and <laughs> still talking, so <laughs> making a good tackle there for came just a yard there for McMillan. Uh, I believe that was Samaski, actually. Oh, well, let me, yep. I'm going to give that the wrong 19. guy there. Well, the problem was, is the pitch... <laughs> yeah, you're right, it was. It was behind number 19. That kind of reached back on his on his hip, his right hip. That happened both times they ran that play. Yeah, yeah actually, they're going to say he got right back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on it. Second down and 10. And they're going to go shotgun here. DeForest takes the snap. Designed run. He'll take it on the right side, looking for a block. Cuts to the outside. Nice open field tackle by tackle. Cardinalis. The Boris on the run. And a nice play. Taking this will go Cardinalis. for a short gain. But, you know, Garrett's used to sort of having his way once he gets into the secondary. But Carlos wrapped him up nicely. Look at Carlos mug in. <laughs> Look at that kid. I want that kid on my team. I'll tell you, quick to the ball. Get a couple big right tackles back. here already. Big third down here for the Red Hawks. First possession, second half, third and seven. And now they will bring DeForest back in under center. Their usual set, the double wing. It goes to Samaski. He tries the left side. Breaking through and very close to the first down. He needed to get to the 40. I think he's a little bit shy. And decision time for uh, for Don Gore. And it's near midfield. It's going to be fourth and about one. Wow, yeah, this is a tough one right here. Kirkendall right uh, up the middle. I mean, that might be too obvious. Uh, even Greenfield, Forest keeper. Uh, Green, Greenfield does have the beef up front. Yeah, fourth and one. On 39. Tight game. Ten minutes to go. Third quarter. Looks like they're going to go. Yep, they're going to run a play on fourth down and one from the 39-yard line. DeForest. And the give, and a first down and more. McMillan breaking the tackle, stretching up to the 48-yard line. First down and 10 for the Red Hawks. Well, they get it with ease. That's good confidence right there in your offense. You figure we can get ourselves one yard. And you got about six or seven on that carry by McMillan. So big call there here early in the second half. Take a little bit of a gamble in your own end at the 39-yard line on fourth and one. And Convert that thing over the 45. Ball now at the 47, 48 yard line there of Greenfield of uh, Frontier. 9.22 to play here in the third quarter. We are tied at eight. Samaski comes in motion to the left. Rolling out to the left is DeForest. Throwing against his body, steps up, heavy rush. Cuts back to the right. Has some blockers out there. Heads downfield, turns the corner to the 50. To the 40, back again, inside the 30, and down there. What an amazing run. He, I don't know what's going to go into the book, Sean, but he ran probably close to 100 yards all told. 22, I think, will be the total, but he, he ran, ran a lot more than that. Boy, and I'll tell you, it looked as though he was in big trouble as he tried to double back, and that linebacker just took an inside, just too far inside. DeForest was able to kind of skirt back around the outside to get back this way, and after that, it was just trying to chase him, catch him, but not down. He gets to the 30-yard line of Greenfield. First down and 10 for the Hawks. And the handoff on the right side, Edo McMillan, nothing doing. He was hit right at the line of scrimmage and stacked up there. It'll be second down and long. Second down by Khalil Brown. And yeah, they're going to say basically no gain. No gain on the yep, play. right back to the line of scrimmage. So McMillan now 70 yards on 13 carries. Khalil Brown, a freshman, number 52, made the tackle. He's a defensive lineman. He was playing middle school football this time last year. Now he's under the Friday night lights. 
Second down and 10. It's DeForest on a bootleg. Has the first down, cuts around Cardinalis. He's inside the Greenfield, 20 down to the 15 yard line. A gain of 15 and a first and 10 for the Hawks. Yeah, just like that, Garrett DeForest has 71 yards on six carries himself. Just ran that naked bootleg and had all kinds of real estate. Put a little juke move on Cardinalis, and Carlos was able to wrap him up, but easy first down for the Hawks. Ball's just inside the Greenfield 15 yard line, 7.36 to play third quarter. We are tied at eight. But the Hawks are in the red zone. And the handoff ball goes out. Uh, ball is the out. The ball is out. Greenfield says they have it. The officials are saying nothing. The handoff went to Samaski. Samaski's taken down in the back. And nope. Frontier is going to keep it. Yeah, gonna lose a couple yards. Samaski got smacked in the backfield. Ball came out. Gonna lose five yards on the play. I, I, guess he, I guess he got it back. Ball back at the 18 yard line. The second down and about uh, 14, 15 yards from there. Greenfield's had a pretty good defensive night. They've been burned a few times by some of these speedy runners for Frontier. Yep, just a quickness. Second down and long. Ida McMillan comes in motion. Back to pass, wide open. They're gonna throw to Donovan Hoffman. Gaz it, touchdown! 18 yard Complete. touchdown pass. To Donovan Hoffman. And it's 14-8 Frontier. For the Red Hawks 72 touchdown. yards on five completed passes by Garrett DeForest. Hoffman's caught most of those. He's had a big night offensively and defensively. Donovan Hoffman, big touchdown catch right there in the end zone. And he is definitely making a bid for player of the game. No question about that. He's had a big night, as you mentioned, Sean. But really, the Greenfield DBs really bit on the play fake. Donovan, I mean, unless he just dropped the ball, he was going to score that touchdown. Frontier again will go for two. They're going to roll the force to the right, but Greenfield up to meet him immediately, and they drive him down. Two-point conversion is no good. Timeout on the field, 6.37 to play here in the third. And on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard, it's now Frontier 14, Greenfield 8 on your country, 95.3. Garrett DeForest, who just threw that touchdown pass to Donovan Hoffman, has it teed up on the 40-yard line. And Frontier has their first lead of the night. It's 14-8, to eight, high end-over-end kick. Hart from his 15, across the 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, still going, 45-yard line. And he has Greenfield set up very nicely for this next drive here in the third quarter. Greenfield now trailing for the first time tonight. Well, McMillan got a little bit of his own medicine there as he tried to tackle Hart. <laughs> Hart's and a big boy. He ended up being the one that bounced off and rolled a little bit afterwards. 45-yard line, Hart takes that ball out too. So again, good starting field position for this offense. And again, key for them to have kept Frontier out of the end zone at the end of the first half. With them coming out their first possession scoring now, Frontier 14, Greenfield 8. Backs are in the I formation. Two receivers to the near side left. Quarterback, Jake Sack, under center. And the handoff goes to Kilgore. And he takes it from the 45 up to the 48-yard line. We'll give him three. It'll be second down and seven. Yeah, not finding it quite as easy to run against this Red Hawk defense as he did last week against the Red Raiders. 100, almost 140 yards last week for Kilgore. Sitting right about 49 yards now. But he's taking 17 carries to get those. Jake Sachs had a couple carries out of the quarterback spot, 32 yards, scores a touchdown for him as well. Two point conversion, he scored. Second down and seven. Ball is spotted at the 48 yard line. They go to Kilgore again, up the middle. Not much there. He's trying to follow the lead block of Hart. Only a yard to the 49, third down and about six from there. I thought we might see something. Oh, no, they brought it up to the 50, so yeah, we'll give third and five. Give them a couple. Thought we might see something a little different out of the offensive back, backfield here for Greenfield in the second half, although it was working pretty good in the first half. Well, here's where you do what Frontier did with the other quarterback, the other number 10. You roll out your quarterback yep. and see if Sacker can, uh, on third down and five, see what they do. See if they roll left with him. Sack, long snap count. He will roll to the left. 
Sets up. Oh, Frontier bearing down, throws downfield. Cardinalis off his fingertips. That at the 25 yard line. Adam. Would have been good for a first down. Adam. And Sack's a little slow getting up. He took a pretty good shot at the end of that. He might have wanted to tuck that under and run. He, again, I think he could have got the first down with his legs, but Cardinalis was pretty much wide open down the left sideline. That ball came in a little hot and kind of went around his face mask, doinked off his head and incomplete. So now the question is this. No. The ball is at midfield. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> and Greenfield will bring their punting unit out. I yeah. think so, yeah. You don't want to give yeah. Frontier a short field. Not here. here. No, no, no. Too early. 14-8 uh, again. Yep. Uh, if it's less than five yards. If it was a yard, I guess you'd have to think about it. But this one here, I think you got to do the smart thing, punt it away. Hart is standing back at the 40. Edo McMillan back at his own 15. Snap goes back. Frontier will set up for the return. Hart boots it away. And it hits at around the 25. Takes a kick inside the 20. Out of bounds at around the 17-yard line. That is where the Red Hawks will begin their next drive here. Leading by a score of 14 to 8. We have a live broadcast tomorrow. It's in Orange, New Athol Road. We're going to have our live broadcast there for the... Uh, 5K giveaway. We're going to be there broadcasting live. Kevin from Bear in the Morning is going to be there from 11 to 1. So come by and see Kevin. Drop your name in the sign-up box. And, hey, later on this month, you could win three grand. I can't, right? You still, I can't? You are employed by Saga Communications. <sighs> so... The answer would be the same answer you gave me if I suggested Greenfield may go on fourth down. <laughs> Absolutely hard no. <laughs> you can't win. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> on first down, they're going to go to Samaski, and Jason brings it uh, across the 15-yard line up to the 17. So not a lot there. Probably no gain there. A little pitch back to Samaski. They're going to move the chains here. Let's see if you got anything. Oh, and you know, I just realized I, I called him Jason. <laughs> play, you know, we were talking about sons of uh, former players. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, this, this is Josh Samowski. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, Josh. No gain, second down and 10. The forest, they give McMillan. Nice, nice 360. And across the 25 yard line, the 26. Short of the first down. Looking a little like. R.J. Bird there with that spin move. Yeah, we saw a lot of that. More his junior year than his senior year. His senior year, he kind of a little more uh, straightforward. But yep. his junior year, he experimented with that spin and had some pretty good success with it. Oh, sure did. And let's bring up a third down and two here for the Red Hawks. And about three minutes, 40 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Again, Frontier leading this one 14 to eight. Third down and two for the Hawks, yes. and Greenfield looks like they jumped. Were they drawn off? Frontier's acting like no. If it is against the wave, that'll be a first down. The easy way for the Hawks. Yeah, we yep. saw that a couple times. step it off yeah. against Greenfield. A couple times last week, Mohawk did that. Committed penalties, giving the other team a first down without having to run a play on third and fourth down happened once as well. By the way, I, I didn't mention exactly where we were tomorrow. We're gonna be at Orange, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Okay, and that's on New Athol Road in Orange, 11 to 1 tomorrow. So go see Kevin. Kevin is extremely excited right now because his Yankees will play in game one of the American League Championship Series tomorrow night in Houston against the Astros. He was really hoping the Rays would win last night. I was too. Because game one between the Yankees and Rays would have been at Yankee Stadium tomorrow night, but instead the Yanks have to go to Houston. Yeah. And yeah. he's a little nervous. Yeah, I can see the difference there. He's a little nervous. He, he, that's going to be a tough series for New York. Yep, both teams. going to be a good one. National League Championship Series begins tonight. And it goes to Samaski, and he's got the first down, or close to it, up near the 40-yard line, actually. You're going to bring him down, let's see, no, nine, inside the 40-yard line. Gain a nine, Kilgore on the hit, second down in short. Three minutes to play here in the third, Frontier 14, Greenfield 8. And a fairly uneventful second half here so far. A little bit of confusion and some, kind of some funny stuff there in the first half, but things have evened out here. Pitch goes to McMillan, he'll try the right side, stretches out, Greenfield will wait for him and he loses his footing. 
And he goes down at the 38-yard line for no gain, maybe even the loss of a, of a half yard. Third down now coming up. Greenfield, this is a big play for Greenfield defensively. They would love to get the ball back before the end of the third. But that would require them to stop them right here. Well, again, Frontier went on fourth and one from the 39-yard line. Right now they're looking at a third and one from that same spot, the 39, their own 39-yard line. Third and one. The snap, the pitch, Samaski. And he has the first down by a body yard up to the 41 yard line. On the carry. And they'll stop the clock with 2.01 to play in the third, now set the chains, the chain. and they will wind that clock again. 33 yards on the ground for Josh. First 12 carries for him in this game. You know, McMillan leading the way with 78 yards on 15 carries, but Garrett DeFore is not too far behind the quarterback for Frontier. He's got six carries for 71 yards himself. Frontier 14, Greenfield 8. Greenfield now trying to make sure that it stays a one possession game. They had the early lead eight nothing, Frontier tied it. Hawks have pretty much dominated here in the third. Back to pass, and a long pass down, and it's picked off by Cardinalis at the 45 the yard ground. line of Greenfield, <laughs> and then finally goes down. I know you're thinking, Sean, the ball may have popped Yeah, loose. just get on the ground, kid. You got kids around him, spinning them around, trying to tackle him, rip that ball out. And he's a little ding coming out of there. Uh-oh, his right knee, his right leg, and he's, he tried to walk off, and now he's gonna get some help, but be a big loss for Greenfield. That kid's been all over the field tonight. He's got a little yeah. limp in the gate there coming off. Looks a little gimpy. Yeah, he looks still fired up, but he looks like he might be hurting. Boy, he's had a great game. Well, he's on the hamstring maybe, I don't know. Brought the ball up to the 45-yard line, so it'll be first and 10 for the Green Wave here. One sixteen to play here in the third. First turnover of the night for Frontier, I believe. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And has Greenfield, Greenfield uh, has not turned it no, over. First turnover of the game. So it's been a pretty clean game. Few penalties here and there, yep. but nothing crazy. All right, Green Wave from their own 45, first down and 10. They go to Kilgore. Uh, they're just gonna ride that horse all night, evidently. Yep. Gain up to around the 47 yard line. We'll give them a, about two, maybe three, second down and long. No, yep. I'm gonna give them two. Well, DeForest had all kinds of pressure coming back on him, and he took a pretty good shot after he released that football. I saw the referee who's standing right there looking down, and uh, obviously no flag on the play, just a good clean hit, and the ball kind of floated. Greenfield able to pick that thing off, so again down 14-8 now. Just over 40 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Two receivers to the near side left. Cardinal is still off the field at this point. We'll see if he comes back after. They fake the pitch, they go to Hart up the middle. Frontier was not fooled. No gain, maybe just a yard. It's going to be third down and long. That may have been the last play of the third. There's 15 seconds left and Greenfield's just huddling up now. Cardinalis now back out there. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna be in any big hurry to run this play, so most likely just let this thing right, run right down. We're down to five seconds now and yeah, they're gonna, that'll be the last play of the third quarter. So the ball is right around the 48 yard line. End of three here at Vets Field in Greenfield. And our score on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. It is Frontier 14, Greenfield 8. Bear Country 95.3. All right, we get set for the fourth quarter here. Great night of football. Two good teams. It's been a really emerged as a great rivalry here between Frontier and Greenfield. Hawks lead 14 to eight. Well, I was just, just talking to somebody the other night about uh, Zach Bardick's senior year and that epic battle down mm -hmm. at Frontier. They were seven and zero going into that one and yeah. they ended up pulling out that win, but Zach Bardick got beat up in that game. And, and he was not physically no. well the rest of that season. Greenfield never won again. Nope, that was it. All right, third down and seven. They're gonna go shotgun now. Sack. Coming in motion is Cardinalis. They flip it to Carlos. Nothing doing. Frontier smelled that out. 
A loss back to the 45-yard line. Greenfield will have to punt it away. Yeah, they tried to and run. Cardinalis is hurt. He's hurt. There's another Greenfield lineman down as well. Two guys slow getting up. Colby Avery yeah. is now on his feet, but he's looking at his right shin or ankle. He's walking it off, and Cardinalis appears to have a more yeah. serious injury. He is calling for some help. And he's been down a few times tonight. They help him. He was looking at his hamstring when he came off the last time as he was holding the back of his right hamstring. So now it's going to be fourth down at about 10. Greenfield uh, unquestionably from their own 45 will have to punt this one away. So Frontier will now will get the ball. Two of his uh, teammates carrying him off the field right now. Yep, Cam Lackey and Khalil Brown will bring him right to the, the sideline. Yeah. Let's see what that is, if that's the hamstring again for Cardinalis. Yeah, we can't quite see, but yeah, it looks like they might be stretching. Yeah, that, you're right. It's his uh, left, left, uh, left calf and yep. ham, hammy, so you're trying to stretch that out. So he'll be replaced in the Greenfield lineup. Uh, defensively by, uh, again, the guy we were mentioning earlier, just a sophomore, Trevor Gibb. Second number 82. shotgun here, lining up deep. Oh, it's going to be a pump. Sorry, I was looking at him as a quarterback. Yeah, yep. probably forgot this fourth down, putting this thing away. And Hart holds, waits. It's a high punt. And McMillan steps away from it. This time it takes a frontier bounce. Lackey will jump right on that there before it goes up any further. It's across the 30-yard line, though. So decent field position for the Red Hawks to begin their next drive. They lead 14 to eight with 11 to one to play here in the football game. Yeah, really a critical juncture right here in the ball game. Frontier the six point lead, 11 minutes to play in the game. A long drive and a score doesn't quite put the game away, but certainly would uh, put Frontier in the driver's seat here. Greenfield, you just gotta get a stop, get the ball back. Yeah, this very important game for Greenfield in this one. Not much of an offense here in the second half. Greenfield had uh, one really exceptional drive back early in the game. Was able to drive their second drive of the game, went right down the field with little difficulty, and they scored, but not much offensively ever since then. McMillan and the quarterback, the force, run into each other, but Ito is so quick, he is still able to make a gain across the 35 up to the 37 yard line. Yeah. Eight of five. Literally ran into his quarterback behind the line of scrimmage. And as he got going, it looked like he'd never stopped. He just was at top speed again. Just that quick gain of five. Yeah, he is quick as a cat. No yep. question about that. Yep. You ever try to catch a cat? <laughs> yeah, they always land on their feet. <laughs> it's true. That's what Edo reminds me of. Second down and five. 37 yard line. Quick drop. Pass is complete to Hoffman, uses a stiff arm, first down the more inside the 50, cuts back, still going down to the Greenfield 40 yard line. Another reception by Donovan Hoffman. Yeah, another 23 yard chunk right there. Oh, and Shane Kilgore got hit in the back of the helmet and he's he's here, he's gonna come off. I didn't see that, but. Oh, right at the very end, he got hit right in the back of his helmet and he his is. Head. Someone's gotta check on him. Yeah. He, uh, I didn't see one. Now we got another Greenfield player limping and over here too. Xavier Carlo came. Oh boy, this fool! Two Greenfield players have had to come off. Greenfield. Kilgore holding it back, and Kilgore took a shot earlier in this game too. First down and ten for Frontier from the forty. They go to McMillan on the right side. Bounces. Tried to get all the way to the outside. Could not do so. They're checking on him now. Carlo got dinged up. On the same play, you see Polizari, his season, uh, oh, he's off. Yeah, he's out. He, he's out, he never suited up. Provost, I mean, the injury's really racking up for this Greenfield team. This is, well, it's a subject maybe, Sean, for another night, but again, the physical nature of this sport, we all know it. And Frontier's a physical team. And yeah, this is, this is like an alley fight here tonight. Yep. Second down and eight from the 38 yard line. They go back to McMillan on the right side into the secondary and Sack saved the touchdown. He brings him down, McMillan down to the Greenfield 22 yard line and all the momentum now on the Frontier Red Hawk side. Yeah, Edo McMillan now sitting at 99 yards. 15, uh, excuse me, 19 carries, uh, 18 carries for Edo. 
They need to they need to have Kilgore just call it a night, I think. Yeah, I think so too. And Greenfield's going to call a timeout to try to get things settled down here. We'll take a timeout. We're down to 845 to play in the football game and our score on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard, Frontier 14, Greenfield 8 on Bear Country 95.3. First, first down and 10 for Frontier. Greenfield, 23, 22-yard line. They lead by six, looking to put it away here against an undermanned Greenfield team that has suffered many injuries here. It's McMillan on the right side, loses his footing. He goes down. He did bring the ball, looked like down to the 21, 22-yard line, so we'll give him a gain of about two to the 21. It'll be second down and eight. And back out of the field comes Shane Kilgore after he got hit in the back of the head and got hit hard earlier. And the handoff again to McMillan. Right side wrapped up by Greenfield and ripped down for no gain. Yeah. And Kilgore was in on that stop, among others. So Greenfield not giving up its third down. They absolutely now, with 8.05 to play in the game, they absolutely for the Green Wave. Oh, another Green Wave player is down. That's uh, Cam Lackey. Now he's up now. And he's up now. Yeah, they cannot give up a score here again. Nope. Two scores uh, with less than eight minutes to go is going to be tough. 14 8 right now. Frontier leads by six. Eight minutes to play in the game. Yeah, Greenfield just yeah. starting to lose some steam here. These guys are running out of gas. They are. Another Not one. good to run out of gas. It is never good to run out of gas. Causes a lot of problems. Can ruin your day. Really. <laughs> Third down. They fake the handoff to McMillan. It's DeForest. Down from behind. A flag comes down at the very end of the play. Looks like that'll go against Greenfield. And depending on what it is, that'll give Frontier the first down the easy way. Now and Jared Hart's limping around a little bit out Jared there. Jared Hart, his right leg is now hurt. He's cramping. Back of his right leg. Wow, we got a lot of, well, they haven't stepped it off. Is this going to go? No, it's going to go, it's going against, to go against Frontier. And we're marching at 15, so personal Oh, foul. big one, huge huh? break for the Green Wave. Back to the 30 yard line now. And the first down marker down at the uh, 13. So it's gonna be third down and 17 from here with 7.50 to play. Again, it's only a six point game. We're far from done here. Yeah, I didn't see what that was, but. Don't you feel though that Greenfield's like on a runaway train and they're just kind of hanging on at the very, the very end, the, the last car, the caboose. They're Dude. just like hanging on. Now that penalty's gonna help now. It's gonna bring up third and very long. And they're going to go to a sort of a shotgun. DeForest, back to pass, looking right, throwing it out there. It is caught by Samaski, short of the first down. The fourth down coming up. He brings it inside the 20, down to the 18 yard line. That'll present fourth down at about five. Garrett DeForest now over 100 yards passing, in addition to 70 yards running the ball. Edo McMillan went over 100 yards on this drive, rushing as well. So yeah, Cam, numbers really Cam Lackey at Greenfield is still not back out there yet, as he has a right leg injury he's dealing with. So it's been a rough night for Greenfield from a physical standpoint. Yeah, a couple injuries last week as well, as we mentioned, the Provost and Pozari. Fourth down. DeForest rolling left. Oh, they got him. And he's going to go down for the sack. He's been very elusive tonight, but not that time. Greenfield brought the heat. Nick Lyons. There you go, Lyons. Yep, big tackle there. Yep, Nick Lyons, number 78. 330-pounder got him. And Greenfield takes over on downs. And, oh, here right, you go. We're not done yet. Here you go, guys. Yep. Can Greenfield eke this out? I'll tell you what, they're going to be a very sore football team tomorrow oh, morning. With, and the Frontier kids as well. This has been, you know, this is the way, when you play Frontier, this is what you get. It yep. ends up being like an alley fight. Yep, they're tough kids and they work hard. and uh, They hit hard. They're going to beat you up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Every chance they get. They've done that tonight. We've seen some big hits. Greenfield just kind of trying to hang on here. Down by six, 6.36 to play in the game. And they have the ball on yep. their own 27-yard line. But offensively, again, from the first quarter on, not much of anything. Uh, one big drive, and that was consistent and good, and yep, not much since then. 
crowd really getting into it. First down and 10 for Greenfield. Handoff goes to Kilgore, and he gets dropped down. No gain, 27 yard line, it'll be second down and 10. Yeah, 20 carries now for Shane Kilgore, the junior. He's just 5'9", 150 pounds. And he has been beaten and battered tonight. That kid's gonna be sore tomorrow. Well, I guess they gave him a yard from the 26 to the 27, so it'll be second down and nine. Clock, though, continuing with six minutes now left to play in the game. Frontier 14, Greenfield eight. Sack looks over the Red Hawk D, settles in under center, takes the snap, rolling to the right. Got a man open, it is caught by Hart of the backfield. First and 10 for Greenfield up the 45 yard line. That play was executed pretty darn close to perfect. Yep, and the first pass completion by Jake Sack tonight. He only attempted one pass last week down at Athol. That's his fourth pass attempt and his first completion and a big first down all the way to their own 45 yard line. So Greenfield, five and a half to play. Making some noise. It is a six point spread. Frontier 14, Greenfield A. First and 10 away from their own 45. Moving left to right here in the fourth. Out of the eye. Handoff goes to Kilgore. Over left tackle. Gain of two to the 47. Second down and eight. It looked like somebody got an early jump off of that offensive line, but no flag thrown. Kilgore followed that block. Ended up with, yeah, we'll call it actually give him a gain of three on that. Well, it's second down and seven. Inside of five minutes to play. So Greenfield, uh, not a big sense of urgency yet. Nope, plenty of timeouts as well. In fact, if you're Greenfield, ideally you run the clock down, score, get the two, yeah. and don't let Frontier get the ball back. Absolutely. Out of the eye formation. Rolling to the left is Sack. Here comes the heat. Good Turns blocks, the corner. Takes off on his own. He's got the first down and more still going in the frontier territory inside the 35 yard line and here comes the green wave let's see he went from the 45 let's see where they spot that thing but what a great run and the blocks to seal that right side were just perfect they're going to mark it just inside the 35 yard line so give him 21 on the carry you know who's not moving well at all is jared hart i mean i'll let you know i don't think you're going to see him carrying the ball he is not moving very well at all i just noticed at the back end of that play but First and 10 for Greenfield at the 34 yard line of Frontier with 4.31 to play in the football game. Yeah, this is where you wanted to be, Greenfield. You got a shot. Backs are in the I formation behind Sack. Long snap count. Takes it. Gives to Kilgore. Left side breaks one tackle. Still going, running hard. Kilgore. Even with his injuries. Kilgore. Down to the 30 yard line. Gain of four. Second down and six. Stayed in bounds, so the clock's still going with 4.15 to play. Again, clock not your enemy right now. If you're Greenfield, ball at the 30-yard line of Second Frontier. Five. You're down by six five. points. Second and five for the wave. I believe they've only used one timeout here in the second half, so they've got four timeouts remaining. Yep, they did. They used that one timeout when they were uh, kind of on their heels yeah. defensively. Yep. Yeah. Double wideouts to the near side right. Backs in the I formation. Second down and five. Rolling to the right. Is sacked, steps up, lets it fly towards the end zone. Cardinalis tipped away, was actually closer to the Frontier defender down at the five yard line. Incomplete, it'll be third down and five. Yeah, decided to take a shot there. Sack rolled out, had plenty of time. Cardinalis pretty well covered. As you said, the defender had a better shot at catching it than Cardinalis did. It falls incomplete though. Look at, look at Jared Hart, he is limping noticeably yeah. back. Well, he was holding his right calf earlier. Yeah, he's he's basically just gutting it out at this point. I think a bunch of them are. Yep. Third and five for Greenfield. Frontier 30 yard line. Obviously four down territory here. Yep. Given the score, the time, and where they are on the field. Frontier 30 yard line. Sack calling the signals. Takes the snap. Fakes the handoff. Steps up. Throws. Got Wide him. open his heart. 15 yard line. First and 10, Wait, Greenfield yeah, inside the 15. Hart. Hart somehow, some, look at him, he's helping him up. He can barely down. move, but he got the first down shot. And he was wide open too, and again, good blocking for Sack as he rolled to his left. He had time to 
get his feet set and find Hart, who was down the left side, and hit him with a perfect strike. 13 yard line, first and 10, and Greenfield with three and a half to play. Again, plenty of time. Line. Greenfield does not have to really rush here. Now, now listen to the crowd here. Greenfield had kicked some extra points early in the season. I don't know if that's still an option. I know the kicker had gotten hurt there a couple weeks ago. Just looking ahead in case they do score this touchdown. From the 13, first down and 10, Sack takes it. Gives right side to Kilgore. Maybe a yard or two, down to around the 12. It'll be second down and nine. Inside of three minutes now to play in the football game. 23 carries for 63 yards for Kilgore. Hard fought yards for that young man. Greenfield trails by six. Frontier trying to seal the deal here. Go to four and one. Greenfield trying to go to three and two. Big, big game as we said for both teams. 12 yard line, second down to nine. 2.30 to play. Greenfield now sets up. Three receivers to the far side left. And now coming back to the right is Cardinalis who's back out there now. Greenfield and Greenfield's got to burn yeah. a timeout because they were not organized. We are going to keep it right I'm here. Let's ready. reset the scene here. Frontier leads it by a score of 14 to eight with 2.17 to play in the fourth quarter. Greenfield has not had a good night offensively in the second and third quarters, but this drive has them in position to tie the game with a touchdown and potentially take the lead on the conversion. But first, they need to get into the end zone, and Frontier is tough to score on. Yeah, you know, again, Greenfield playing just a gritty, gutty performance right now. They've been beaten up all night long. They've had injuries over the last couple weeks. To be in this position, I think they've got to be happy, but yeah, now you got to finish. The ball is on the 12-yard line of Frontier. Second down and nine. All right, timeout's over. Team's back into the field. We will see what Coach Kaczewski and his assistants have come up with. He just gave the play call to Jake Sack. Sack has completed two of six tonight, 33 yards. He's run for 53 yards as well. No bigger completion than that first down Pass to Jared Hart. All right, they come out. Receivers on either side. Backs from the I formation. Second and nine from the 12. Sack gives to Kilgore. Bounces to the left side. Wrapped up and driven back, though. Great defensive effort. It'll be third and long. Yeah, not much he can do there. Just try to get to the outside. But Frontier ball, they just flow to the ball there. Kilgore just back to the line of scrimmage. Just up, they're gonna mark him up about a half a yard there, yeah. so not much gain. Ball is still on the 12-yard line, third down. It looked for a moment, he kind of gave, he kind of got a deep handoff. It looked like there was a lane, but it, it closed did, yeah. up quickly. 145 to play, clock rolling. Right, we're expecting a roll out here with Sack. He will roll to the right with some blockers looking towards the end zone and oh, gets he got hit. Smacked. And the ball popped loose. It did come out. Still fighting for it. No, they're going to say he was down. They're going to say he was down, but did he take a Not hit? Down. He's okay, but that's a big loss. It's going to be fourth down and the ball back at around the 17 yard line. Yeah, he tried to hang in there as long as he could. He rolled to the right. The blocking broke down and he got smacked right in the mouth. The ball did come out. I think that was a fumble. They said it, he was yeah, down, but yeah, I thought it, I thought it, I thought it was out. Yeah, Sean. and then the mad scramble. He even went after it again after he had been blocked down. He got up and he got his mitts on it one more time. I'm not sure who actually ended up coming up with it. Didn't matter because they said he was down. But the ball all the way back at around the 17 yard line. They need to get a first down at the three. So it is going to be fourth down and 14 with under a minute to play. Here in this football yeah, game. Clock is rolling, 48 seconds. If Greenfield can somehow convert the first down, the clock would stop. All right, here we go. Fourth and 13, and now Greenfield has to burn the timeout. After all that time that expired, 36.5 seconds left. We'll keep it here. Kaczewski is going to bring 
his entire offense over as they plot this play. Remember, this is the guy that drew up the fourth and 23 <laughs> play on Turkey Day. Well, this isn't going to hurt you right here, that timeout. You still have two, so yep. 36 and a half seconds to play. I mean, the big point here is, is they've got to get the first down. So they're going to get this ball down inside the three regardless. They had it first down and 10 on the Frontier 13-yard line after that reception to Hart. And the crowd was going crazy here. And as I'm looking in the stands, wow, a lot of, there's a much bigger crowd here than I realized. Yeah, nice crowd. Nice crowd here. Vocal crowd tonight, too. Well, they've seen a very good game, yep. a very, very physical game. The ball's on the near side hash mark. We'll call it the 17 again. They need to get to the three, but really, they need to get into the end zone. Yep. They trail by six, 14 to eight. Yep. All right, here we go. They're in the huddle now. They can get the first down, and as you said, the clock would stop. they got two timeouts, but need a big play right here. It's a long shot. Yeah. Fourth down. Sack brings them up. Sack rolls to the left. Heavy rush. And he is going to go down. He is sacked back at the 31-yard line, and Frontier is going to get the victory. And Sack is taken down in the back. He rolled out. He was going to try to get it down to Cardinalis in the end zone. Left side never was able to deliver the ball. And I'll tell you, too, that was really a, a nice play there. I think it was McMillan that came shooting up, and he, got, he kind of went to where Sack was going to end up, not where he was. Took a direct line to the path that Sack was heading in as he rolled to the left. He met him there, tied him up, and then another defender came in and finished him off. And that's going to be that for Greenfield. 27 seconds to go. Frontier will take over. And just those two timeouts remaining, I think that's going to be it for Greenfield. Frontier is in victory formation. Garrett DeForest takes a knee. And that will do it. Greenfield will not burn their remaining TOs. That's a it tough was loss. fruitless. And the Frontier Red Hawks, they earned it the hard way, but they get the victory. Final score on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard, the Frontier Red Hawks 14, the Greenfield Green Wave 8. Post game show coming up next on Bear Country 95.3. Frontier Red Hawks 14. Good game. All right, back at Vets Field, Greenfield High School, and the Frontier Red Hawks with a 14-8 victory over the Greenfield Green Wave. Jeff Terrell, Sean Hubert, Dave Reno. Well, that was something, Sean. It was, a, you know, was it was a it, good game. It was a good game, and then uh, there were some parts of it that weren't good. Uh, and again, referees had a tough time in the first half. Second half kind of corralled that thing, so that was better. But what an effort by both teams. Again, the Red Hawks, we knew the favorite coming in here tonight. And Greenfield already banged up coming in. And what a, what a game both teams played with a lot of heart. Greenfield with a shot there at the end and just couldn't get it done. But put themselves in the right position to be able to do so. What a gritty performance by the Green Wave. And just a tough loss for them, 14-8. I guess we go back to the first half, really, where they felt they'd scooped a, a fumble and then run into the end zone, and uh, that, that turned out to be not the case, but it certainly looked like Al Dean looked like he thought that that is what had happened, and uh, well, that kind of changed the momentum of the game right there a little yeah, bit. That, that's the point we want to make because, you know, I see it all the time. Uh, I see it more uh, better when uh, during a basketball game because of the proximity. We're so much closer to coaches. I'll see a play on the on the on the court, and I'll see the coach trying to work the official, and I I know what you really know happened. You know they're doing that, yeah. And I know what's happening. That's not what was happening at the end of the first nope. half. There was there was that play where it looked like it was a fumble, scoop, touchdown, Greenfield, no go. And they and they actually ruled that there was just it was no play. Yeah, just like put a give him first down again. And they gave him first down again. So and we saw the Greenfield coaching staff absolutely go berserk. Yep. Yep. They went nuts. Yep. So which makes you wonder, okay, what, what actually happened? Yeah, because absolutely. it didn't seem like they were selling a call. It looked like they, they felt like something very bad happened to their football yeah, Al team. Dean, Al Dean was hot. And again, you don't see that guy uh, really have too too much to say at any point. And uh, been doing yeah. this a long time. And 
we'll have to ask those guys afterwards what they saw, what they felt, and uh, how that all uh, took place down on the field. But at that point, Frontier took the ball all the way down, and they almost scored before the end of the first half, and that was huge for Greenfield mm -hmm. to yes. stop them at the one or two yard line there at the end of the first half. Frontier did come out. They score on the first possession of the second half, and then that was it. So. And Sean, you know, when we talk about Frontier football these last few years, of course, the guy that we talk about probably more than anybody else would be Garrett DeForest, Edo McMillan, obviously now really coming to the fore, a couple of other guys. But the guy who got it done in a major way is one that we talk about really very seldom, but it was unavoidable tonight because he had one hell of a game. About uh, every time we said this kid's name, Donovan Hoffman. I mean, that kid caught a bunch of balls, very important catches, made good catches, but defensively too. Particularly in the first half, we called that kid's name a half a dozen, eight times, mm -hmm. making big tackles. And he came off the field at one point, looked like he was a little dinged up, but able to come back out and finish this game strong. So, I mean, again, Garrett DeForest had himself a great game. He was sacked once, intercepted once, he did throw that touchdown, 108 yards, six of nine passing. He ran for 71 yards as well, ran in that touchdown. But Edo McMillan, 20 carries for himself, or just over 100 yards, 101. I got him at Samaski, ended up with 33 yards on 12 carries. Kirkendall, four carries for 10 yards. But yeah, Donovan Hoffman, really the difference maker, I feel uh, we both felt for uh, the Red Hawks tonight, both offensive and defensively. Frontier with the victory goes to four and one on the year. Greenfield drops to two and three on the season. We get the Red Hawks again next week against Franklin Tech, Sean. Yeah, that's going to be a tall task for Franklin Tech. We're not sure how they're doing tonight. Uh, it looked like they had a, a winnable contest for them, and we'll see mm -hmm. how they yep. make out. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, next week down at uh, Frontier, that's, uh, that's going to be a tall task for Franklin Tech. This Frontier is the team right now is uh, just playing some good, tough football, and they're fast. And, uh, yeah, going to uh, be a tough one for Tech on the road, but looking forward to seeing it. All right, we'll have it for you next Friday night, starting at 645 right here on Bear Country 95.3. Final score for the final time tonight from Vets Field in Greenfield. On the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne Falls scoreboard, the Frontier Red Hawks 14, the Greenfield Green Wave 8. For Sean Hubert and for Dave Reno, I'm Jeff Terrell. Thanks you so much for listening tonight. Have a great weekend in Bear Country, everybody.